Hello everyone, welcome back to EduMoon Tutorials. In this last lecture of Unit 1, we will be covering binary storage and registers as well as binary logic. Myself Sohana Dhamutoti and let's get started. Let's first discuss binary storage and registers. Now, the binary information in a digital computer must have a physical existence in some medium for storing individual bits. Now, these individual bits are stored in the form of a binary cells. So, a binary cell is a device that possesses two stable states and is capable of storing one bit. It can be either a 0 or a 1 depending upon the value we give them. Now, let's get into the register. What is a register? A register is a contagious group of binary cells. For example, if we consider a 16-bit register, it can have like zeros and ones values. It can be some random number like this one. Now, a register with 16 cells can be in one of the 2 power 16 possible states. If we consider a 4-bit register, we will be having 2 power 4 possible states. But if we consider a 16-bit register, let it be n-bit register, then we will be having 2 power n possible states which are ranging from 0 to 2 power n minus 1. Here our n value is 16. Now, let's get into register transfer. Now, how does actually a computer work? We humans can understand alphabets, numbers, alphanumeric constants like dollar symbol, asterisk symbol or any other kind of symbols. But can a computer understand those values? No, right? It can only understand zeros and ones. So in digital systems, register transfer operation is a basic operation that consists of a transfer of binary information from one set of registers to the other set of registers. Now let's consider an example. Now. Uh, consider this entire diagram present here. Now, from the keyboard side, if I start entering these kind of uh, alphabets like J, O, H and John, what will be actually happening in the back end? Each time a key is struck, the control circuit enters an equivalent 8-bit alphanumeric character code into the input register. Here, you can see the input register, right? Whenever I enter something, this control, like for each J, an 8 cell is produced and for O an 8 cell bit of registers is produced and for H 8 cells are produced and for N 8 cells are produced. In this way it, uh, this control will be producing 8 bits. Now uh, these 8 bits like represents the ASCII code character values actually okay. The information from this input register is then transferred into the 8 bit least 8 bits of the processor unit. Okay, like the processor unit will be having processor registers. Now, each and everything will be having registers. Input unit will have input registers. Processor unit will have processor registers. Memory unit will have memory registers. Okay. So, now, as soon as these 8 registers, 8 bits are uh, entered from input register to the processor register, the least 8 bits are filled now. Now, after filling of e these 8 bits, these are then transferred into the memory register. Now, the memory registers will be storing each of them in terms of zeros and ones. These zeros and ones are actually from the ASCII character codes. So, in this way, whenever we enter some values, the, uh, the computer will be understanding in terms of zeros and ones and this is the entire process that's being done. This is not such an important one, but uh, you will be getting to know about all these register transfers mostly in your second year. So, don't worry uh, much about register transfer. Now, let's uh, jump into binary logic. Now, let's look on few definitions for the binary logic. Now, what does a binary logic mean? Binary logic deals with variables that take on two discrete values like two different values and with operations that assume some logical meaning. Now binary logic consists of binary variables and a set of logical operations. Usually the variables are alphabets like a, b, c, x, y, z, anything it can be. And logical operations, the basic uh, logical operations here we are considering it to be end or and not. In the next unit we will be going into a broader aspect of logical operations and boolean algebra. Okay. Now what as a end. Now, end is generally denoted by a dot or usually by an absence like x dot y equals to z or x y equals to z. Both of them represent the same thing. Now, uh, let's look into its logical gate and truth table. First, let's look on to its truth table. Uh, for example, if x and y and then z will be your output. And this is your input side okay now when considering only two uh, values we have only four possible chances like it can be 0 0 0 1 1 0 and a 1 1 now end is basically like a multiplication operation like 0 and a 0 is a 0 
zero and one is again a zero. One and zero is a zero. One and one is only one. Now, how do we represent the logical gate for this one? The logical gate for n can be given as like this one. Here, these two are input signals, and this is your output terminal. Here, x and y is your input, and z will be your output. This is the basic end definition I could give you. Now let's jump into or. Or is denoted by a plus, like x plus y equals to z. Okay. Uh, again, let's look to its logical gate, and then its truth table. First, I'll discuss the truth table for you. Here again, x y n z. This is your input sign, and this is your output. Now it can again have only these four possible conditions, right? So zero plus a zero is a zero. Zero plus one is a one. One plus zero is a one. One plus one is again a one. Now its logical gate can be given like this. This is an x. This is a y, and this is z. This is two are input uh, ports, and this one is your output port. Now let's look into the NOT gate. Now let's look onto the NOT. For a given x, uh, it can be x bar or x prime like this. Both are the representations for NOT. What is a NOT gate? Actually, NOT is nothing but an inverted form. Uh, if you look into its uh, logic gate and truth table, we have only one input here. This is an input and this is an output. If it's zero, inverted of zero is one, and if it's a one, the inverted form of one is zero. That's it. And the logic gate can be represented as this bubble stands for the inversion. So if this is an x, this will be your x bar or x uh, prime. Both of them stands the same. Now let's look into the time diagrams. Uh, well, time diagrams actually, uh, while going on further, it will be so complicated. But I will give you the short and the detailed description of what time diagrams are all about. Now it has only two states: a low state and a high state. This represents a high state and this represents a low state. Low state is uh, represented using a zero. High state is represented using a one. So this is a one. It's still in the higher form. So one. This is in the lower form. So this is a zero and this is a lower form zero. Now for y also, these two are in the lower states. So this is a zero. This is a zero. And these two are in higher states. So this is a one. This is a one. And this one is again a zero. Now, uh, just uh, let's try finding end or and all for these x and y values. Now. End of x and y, like zero and zero, is a zero. So it is a lower form, and one and zero is also a lower form. One and one is a higher form. And just connect these. And now again, zero and one is a lower form. Zero and zero is again a lower form. So how do we write these values? These two are in lower state. So zero, zero, and this is a one higher state, and this is a zero and a zero. So we are done with our x dot y, which is end. Now or zero plus a zero is a zero. Now one plus zero is a one. One plus one is again a one. Zero plus one is a one. Zero and a zero is a zero. So, so this will be your um, or uh, just don't consider this. This is wrong. Uh, till here, this this is your answer. So this is a zero. This is a one. This is a one. This is a one. And this is a zero. Okay. Now let's try finding the not for the given x. For a uh, zero. The inverted form of zero will be one, which is in the higher state. So for one, it is a zero, and again for one, it is zero. For zero, it is one. For again zero, it is one. So just connect these. So this is a one. This is a zero. This is a zero, and this is a one, and this is a one. So now finally, we are done with the time diagrams also. So we successfully completed our unit one in digital logic design. Thank you for listening so pati patiently for all these lectures. In the next lectures, in the coming series of lectures, we will be covering a unit two, which is Boolean algebra and logical gates. Thank you. Until then, stay tuned. You, adieu, mon.